Hey everybody, how you guys doing today? Jim Prusak, physical therapist from the Pain PT. And today we got evidence of the week. And I wanted to update you guys on a few more papers, two papers today that again show connections to your autonomic nervous system with chronic conditions in the body. I mentioned the other day on one of my YouTube shorts that regulating your autonomic nervous system is one of the most important things to do to feel better. If you're stuck in a fight or flight state, what we call a highly sympathetic state, you're not going to feel better because that's a stressed out state. And likewise, if your system's going into freeze and you're shut down, it's hard to feel better as well. What you're gonna to learn today through the evidence of the week are two studies, and I'm gonna go through the evidence around your autonomic nervous system and what we see from a lot of data in terms of where people's systems are. So let's get to the studies this week. The first one is a paper uh, in 2020, and it was again a review study, a systematic review, a meta-analysis, which is good. It's gonna pull together a bunch of data. And the title of the paper is Reduced Heart Rate Variability in Patients with Medically Unexplained Physical Symptoms. Okay, and I've, I've talked about this before with a different study, but I wanted to go back and look at some of the research that's come out since then or research maybe I hadn't seen. So in this particular paper, they yielded 58 studies, okay? And they had a, a number of people, um, almost 2,000 people, I think, in total from 58 different studies. And what they found with the heart rate variability, remember the heart rate variability is a measure of your autonomic nervous system. And they looked at this nervous system functioning in three common medically unexplained physical symptoms. And these are chronic pain, chronic fatigue, and irritable bowel syndrome. And the chronic pain they lumped as fibromyalgia. So fibromyalgia, IBS, and chronic fatigue syndrome. <clears throat> and what they found with the data here was that the heart rate variability indicated reduced parasympathetic activity okay, in this group compared to the healthy group. So what they found here is that the autonomic nervous system was dysregulated. And this is particularly lower parasympathetic activity may play a role in patients with these conditions. So again, what we see here again is the nervous system being dysregulated into a sympathetic state, okay? So reduced parasympathetic means sympathetic is highly activated, that's fight flight. So when our systems are chronically or actively or extremely elevated into that sympathetic state, it's gonna exert an effect on your body. And that's what causes and influences and sustains the chronic symptoms you have. This is how the nervous system works to create and sustain physical symptoms. So, as you're going to see, we'll talk a little bit at the end what we can do about this. But this study here in the conclusion, they said this current study provides updated evidence that studies measuring heart rate variability in the three most common medically unexplained physical symptoms is the first major uh, update of an analysis since another one that was done 10 years ago. <clears throat> and it says 10 years later, now, and including twice as many studies, we find support for an association between heart rate variability, indices of reduced parasympathetic activation, and medically unexplained physical symptoms, possibly reflecting chronic psychological distress. And that's what we know, everybody. It's about your nervous system and your brain. These are the two areas that we focus on in our healing here from chronic symptoms. We don't focus on the body because that's just a depository from the nervous system in the brain. Okay, so what we can do is we can learn to regulate our autonomic nervous system. Basically, we need to get into more parasympathetic activity and stay there longer. Or if we get kicked up into fight flight, sympathetic, we can come back down into that good parasympathetic state. It's really important and needed for healing. The second study I want to share with you guys today was one that came out in 2025, February, 
And it said comparing autonomic nervous system function in patients with functional somatic syndromes, stress-related syndromes, and healthy controls. So they had three groups of people in this particular study looking at the autonomic nervous system. They had people who had um, fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue. Those were the two physical symptoms or stress-related syndromes, which they called overstrain or burnout and healthy controls. And again, they took measures of the autonomic nervous system through heart rate variability, what they call skin conductance levels, which measures that system and peripheral skin temperature in response to enduring recovery from psychosocial stressors, okay, with these different types of um, syndromes. So what they found here was that um, the people who were in either of those two groups, the fibromyalgia or chronic, and chronic fatigue group or the stress-related syndrome group, the burnout group, both of those groups at rest, at a resting state, had a lower parasympathetic tone, meaning they had an increased sympathetic activity in their system. Okay, and they also found that the people when they were stressed, and they made them stressed during the study, they had a slower recovery from the stress, the two groups. So it showed the autonomic nervous system was not um, settling down or relaxing enough or, or getting into that parasympathetic state. And their conclusion here from this study was that our results indicate a dominance of the sympathetic nervous system in both patient groups. Again, the fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue group, as well as the stressed out group compared to the healthy group, suggesting that autonomic nervous system dysfunction is a transdiagnostic feature for stress-related and functional somatic syndromes. Okay, and that's what we're dealing with here, everybody, functional somatic syndromes. It's all these different names. We, Dr. Sarno called it TMS. Howard Schubiner called it neural circuit disorder. Now it's, it was called psychophysiological uh, disorder. Now it's called um, neuroplastic symptoms, functional syndromes. There's lots of names, somatic um, symptoms. But basically all these terms, all these diagnoses point back to the same underlying dysfunction that you can see is the autonomic nervous system is primarily in too much fight or flight, too much sympathetic activity, and that's dysregulating the system and causing this in the body. Again, the brain centers control the autonomic nervous system, but we can work at the autonomic nervous system level to calm that system down. So when we think parasympathetic, we think calm, we think relaxation, we think settled. Okay, when we think fight or flight, obviously we think ramped up, we think escalated, we think we're in, in frustration and anger or fear, anxiety. Okay, we're highly activated or agitated or scared or worried, something like that. We're stressed out basically. So the goal here, everybody, is to reduce the stress in your system. And as you reduce the stress and you start to relax, that's the key word here, you're gonna activate your parasympathetic nervous system. And as that system can stay activated, you're gonna feel better. You just will, that's actually how you're going to feel better. You, like I said before, you can't really feel better if you're stuck in a sympathetic state. Okay, that's just the way the system works. So as you get into parasympathetic, we can go over this another time, your system starts completely changing the output of what's being produced in your body. Very different chemicals, very different neurotransmitters, a whole host of different things happening, different processes. For example, digestion starts going more. Okay, some people can hear rumbling in their stomach. Saliva starts being produced in your mouth. People size goes down, breathing regulates. Um, vagus nerve is activated. Inflammation reduces, cortisol goes down. Muscle tension and tightness also reduce. So everything is sort of settling and calming when we calm down. So the answer, everybody, for your healing is to calm your nervous system down. That is the answer. And again, there's lots of ways to do this. I'm not going to go over them all today, but there's many ways that people get their nervous system to calm down in the parasympathetic. 
Breathing is one of the best ways, and we'll go over that another day. I mentioned that on my YouTube short the other day. One of my favorite, probably my favorite way is to take control of your breath and regulate your breath because that will help regulate your autonomic nervous system. Other things like making time for slowing down and relaxing, doing enjoyable activities, listening to music if that calms you, makes you happy, getting involved in activities that you enjoy, give you purpose and passion, connecting with good people who make you feel good and you feel like there's a nourishment between you guys. All these things are going to activate parasympathetic. Okay, so there's lots of ways to get there. Um, acknowledging your emotions and letting them go will bring you in the parasympathetic. Okay, so there's lots of ways we can get down into that state. And the idea is that we can try to stay there because that's when you're going to feel your best. And I know you've have all been there at some point where you feel, oh, I just feel like more relaxed, more settled in yourself. And when you feel that way, you typically feel pretty good. Okay, especially if you can stay there for a while. All the pains, all the symptoms, all the stress will start to go down because that nervous system takes it away and it, and it stops producing stress. Remember the sympathetic nervous system when it's overactivated, as you saw today from the data, it's pumping out stress into the body. Fight, flight, pumping out that stress. And that we'll feel that in our bodies through these somatic symptoms feeling stressed, mentally stressed as well, right? Emotions. So hope you guys take from today's evidence of the week how powerful and important it is that you start to regulate your autonomic nervous system, moving out of a fight flight state, which is most common, most dominant in people with all these different conditions and moving more into that nice, calm, cool, collected and relaxed parasympathetic state. And we've, we've got ways we can go there and we can get there. Some of them I mentioned, and if you want more help on this and how to activate that parasympathetic nervous system, please reach out. It's part of what I teach people um, because I think it's a really important piece uh, and it's actually needed for you to feel better. Otherwise, you, like I said, you can't really feel settled when you're in a fight or flight state all the time. Okay, everybody. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. If you want more help, support, you can find me at thepainpt.com and we'll see you guys next time. Take care now. Bye-bye.